So how well does antivirus protect you? I think this is a conversation that, you know, is not really talked about much in the offensive security community. I think that a lot of people, even on the offensive side, have a lot of um, misconceived notions on antivirus, right? And I think even people that aren't in the space, people that, you know, maybe they have a passing interest in it, maybe they have, you know, no knowledge of this field whatsoever. They definitely have uh, some misconceived notions on antivirus. So let's break it down and understand, you know, better, you know, what, what is the current state of antivirus? How well does it protect you? And, you know, how concerned should you be? How cautious should you be on the internet as well? So let's just start off by saying, you know, there are local attacks as well. I like to mention this because a lot of people think of remote attacks all the time, right? They think about visiting a malicious site, downloading a, a virus, a Trojan, what have you, malware, and getting exploited. And that is extremely prevalent. But at the same time, that's not all there is, right? There could be a someone with a uh, you know virus on a USB on a flash drive. Maybe they just dropped it in the parking lot. You picked it up. And you're like, oh, I wonder what's on this, right? By the way, that's how a lot of red teamers like to run their engagements to get that uh, initial foothold, by the way. So certainly if you're working at an office and nine to five, you see that USB in the parking lot, do not pick that up. You know, a lot of uh, red red teamers are probably hating me right now, but yeah, for your own safety, don't pick that up. But yeah, that is definitely a uh, attack vector, right? Because that local access, right? Even if someone has local access to your computer, right? You know, it always makes me laugh when I'm at places like, um, you know, kind of chuckle to myself when I'm at places like, you know, car dealerships and stuff like that. And they're doing your paperwork and you're sitting there and their computer, the back of their computer is just facing you. And it's like, it would be so easy if I was a threat actor just to slip in a USB in the back of the computer, you know, like a rubber ducky or something like that and get access to the point of sale system and just pivot from there. I mean, that's how a lot of these huge hacks happen, right? They start from one little machine somewhere on the network that was not properly secured. The attackers get access into that and they start their enumeration process and they can pivot from there quite easily most of the time. So yeah, definitely consider the local aspect, right? And an antivirus, you know, a good antivirus is designed to protect you from local attacks as well as the remote attacks. They're, they both are all the same as far as the antivirus is concerned, right? It's going to be looking at the processes running on your system. If you try to install something, then it's going to run, you know, a, a check on it first. But what are these checks, right? Because if you don't really understand what they are, it might seem like magic, right? Well, a lot of the antivirus signatures, a lot of it's signature based. So what does that mean, right? Well, that could mean a number of things. It really depends on how the detect, you know, the people that write the detections, how they specifically wrote the detection for that piece of malware. And a lot of this stuff is pretty proprietary. They don't really release how they do it because they don't want the attackers to know how to bypass it. But it's very cat and mouse, as it might sound. So, you know, it, especially if the detection was not written in a, in a very solid way. It could be as simple as just changing a string in the exploit. Like it could be something as dumb as like changing a, a variable name or something like that in the worst case, right? And in a better case, you know, maybe you have to obfuscate it and you know, pack it or, you know, really do a lot more than that, jump through a lot more hoops. But here's the thing, and this is the point that I really want to drive home in this video. Bypassing antivirus is absolutely trivial for any hacker that's halfway decent. It, it, it's very trivial. So the, these, these antiviruses are not a threat at all to an attacker. Now, before you panic too much, where is this useful? I'm not saying that antivirus is not useful. I definitely use antivirus. Where, where antivirus really saves you is against the known exploits out there. So say there's a particular strain of malware out there that's known, you know, it's been seen in the wild, and, you know, someone's written a detection algorithm for it, or they've written a, a, a signature, I should say, for it, right? It will protect you very well against those if they haven't been modified at all from, you know, the original strain as they're seen out there in the wild, right? So 
if you, if you're going to say you're downloading something, um, chances are if you're using something like Windows Defender, and by the way, Windows Defender is an antivirus. A lot of people, especially people that are not in the security space, they don't think, you know, they, they say things like, I don't use antivirus. It's like, oh, did you disable Defender? Oh, you didn't? You're actually using one of the best antiviruses you could use. <laughs> so just know that, yeah, by default, you are you're using antivirus. Now, I think technically Microsoft does not call it Defender anymore, um, but if you go into your... Windows security settings, you'll see, um, you'll see the, the antivirus there. You, you have it. It's installed unless you manually disabled it. And it sets off a lot of alarms when you do that. It starts screaming at you. So you'll know if you did that, that won't happen by accident. But I will say that, yeah, these, these antiviruses, even with Defender, I'm just going to call it Defender. It's easier. As good as it is, it's, it's still not that great. I mean, it's getting better, but it's still not that great at detecting beyond that point, right? And there's a lot of things it does. Like, it, it, it does try to predict new malware. And this is something that, you know, they're trying to do, but it's very cat and mouse again. And there's so many ways to bypass. It's kind of like, you know, securing things is difficult, right? Why? Because the defenders have to defend everything. The attacker only has to find one way in, right? Right. So that's why it's so difficult. And, and and there's just so many ways that you can obfuscate things. And I, I will say, even for me, as someone that's not really strictly a red teamer per se, for as someone who does some red team stuff, but mostly on the pen test side uh, in my career, I will say that even I am able to bypass like all these antiviruses and it's not too difficult. So what that means is that if someone wants to target you, someone wants to hack you specifically, you're not protected at all, really. Not not really. Not from antivirus, at least. So so just be aware of that. Be aware that if, if you are the target of an attack, that get, antivirus do not rely on that to protect you. And this is the reason that you see uh, these advanced threat actors, right, so successful at attacking, you know, government officials and things like that, right, the ransomware campaigns that are targeted against specific uh, entities, right? Specific, you know, corporations or government or whatever. And they've been so successful. That's the reason why, like the antivirus is doing more or less nothing to protect them from that. So with that being said, use antivirus because if you are the average user out there on the internet and you're just, you're, you're mostly using your computer to browse the web and maybe, you know, do some of your, you know, nine to five job, things like that then it can protect you uh, a lot better than not having it, let's just say. And it's actually going to, to it's actually going to, I would say, catch like 90% of the threats out there just to give a conservative estimate. So I don't want you to leave here thinking that you're screwed and that this has no value. It definitely does. And it's getting better every day. I mean, not too long ago, Windows Defender was one of the worst antivirus products. Now it's the best. So, um. And one other thing I'd like to mention is for all you Mac users out there, because I know you guys are going to comment on the video uh, asking as well, right? It's like, oh, do I need an antivirus? And I would say no. I mean, there are some that you can use if you want to go the extra mile. But I mean, I have a Mac personally, and I don't really see the uh, the reason to, the real incentive to use it per se, uh, because for the same reasons as before, except for the fact that you know, for the same reason as before in that if someone wanted to attack you, even with your antivirus, they targeted you. It doesn't matter. They would get by your, your Mac antivirus. And another thing is that a lot of the Mac antiviruses are far, are far, far inferior to the Windows ones just because there's more of an incentive on the Windows side to develop this. Why is that? Because most of the malware, like 98% of the malware and, and don't quote me on the exact number, but it's something like that. 98, 95% of the malware, let's just say, is written to attack a Windows machine. Why is that? Because Windows has the vast majority of the market share. So most people are using Windows computers. So if you're using a Mac, you're still in the minority. So most of the, and, and also a lot of these threat actors, instead of caring about attacking like, you know, random, you know, Bob and, uh, and Jim over here, they're going after big corporations, right? Just like we say, everyone's using Active Directory. Everyone's, 
you know, if you've had a corporate job before, chances are they did not give you a Linux laptop. They gave you a Windows laptop, right? Maybe you got a Mac one. Sometimes people do, but you're again, you're in the vast minority there. Everyone's using Active Directory. Everyone's using Windows, and and that's just the way it is. So they're going to go after those bigger targets because it's more lucrative for them. If they're going to break the law. They want to get compensated for that, basically. So that's why that's why um and because of that you know the antivirus vendors have put the most effort into you know optimizing the product for windows so with that being said the linux and mac antiviruses while they do exist uh, they're not very good for one thing and the chances that you encounter that you know malware targeted at, at mac or linux is really low it doesn't really justify the cost and if someone was going to target you then I mean, it's not really doing much for you anyway. So I just don't see the reason to use an antivirus at all if you're on those uh, operating systems. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Maybe we'll spark a bit of a discussion off of this. And uh, if you want to get into some technical content, maybe you're interested in learning cybersecurity. I got my beginner's playlist on the screen for you right now. Don't worry about not knowing where to start. Uh, I have it right there. And also, I don't get any any um, compensation for saying this, but check out Try Hack Me. I always recommend that to new members as well. But yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.